Welcome to the wonderful world of photography. Now, if you've just recently bought a camera and you're feeling a bit overwhelmed and lost, then I'm here to help you to discover how easy it is to learn photography as a beginner. In 1993, a young wannabe whippersnapper photographer, that would be me, started a photography school in South Africa. Now, after I'd been accepted to the course, before we started, I tried to learn as much as possible about photography. Of course, completely missing the point that I was about to be taught all of this stuff. I thought that everybody else there would be laughing at me if I didn't know my f-stops from my bus stops. And in an effort to jump in with both feet and learn as much as possible about photography, I got totally confused about what I thought I should be trying to learn. The guidance I got from my lectures was so, so helpful and it showed me where to start as a beginner photographer. If it's okay with you, I'd like today to share with you what I learned back then. So at the end of this video, you're going to have a roadmap to guide you through these exciting early days as a beginner photographer. You will know which three areas are going to give you the biggest rewards and you'll be creating your own amazing photographs in no time. How's it? How's it? Unlike those days when I was at photography school, these days most people tend to learn photography online. Now like you, they end up here on YouTube and they fall into this rabbit hole of people talking about odd terms like apertures, exposing to the right, rules of thirds, and something about a raw file which, you know, quite frankly, sounds like a thing that's escaped from a cooking channel. Do you ever feel overwhelmed by all of this? Now I know I did earlier on. I was looking at books and magazines trying to improve my photography skills, but they just made me more confused. Luckily, that first day of photography school wiped away all my confusion. I knew what we were going to work on, and more importantly, why to improve our photography. And it's this experience, one which I think so few photographers get to have, that I'm going to share with you now, that so we can work together to get rid of your overwhelm. I can't wait to get started. We're going to keep things nice and simple and we're going to look at those three areas which when you explore are instantly going to help you improve your photography skills as a beginner. The first thing we're going to look at is the technical aspect of things. Now this could be a confusing world of mysterious words like ISO, f-stop and this thing called bokeh which everybody seems to to go nuts for. Now quite simply a photograph is made when light travels through a lens hits something sensitive to it and then a shutter cuts off that light and an exposure is made. See, I told you, it's, it's that simple. There's nothing to be worried about. Every photograph ever made has more or less followed that process. Now, right now, as a beginner, all you really need to understand are these three easy things. Aperture, this is how much light the lens is letting through. This is controlled by blades in the lens which open and close in increments called f-stops. Those are those odd numbers that you see on a lens, f1.8, f2.8, f4, 5.6, and so on. Now, they're based around mathematical formulas, but don't worry, you don't need to know why these numbers were chosen. For the moment, just know that the smaller the number, the wider the aperture, and the larger the number, the smaller it is. Think of it like this, setting your lens at, say, f1.8, is like it being a drain pipe, you know, loads of water throws flu. Set, stop down your lens, so that's setting your lens to a smaller aperture like 5.6, makes the lens more like a hose. Now, less water is able to pass through it at the same time. Now, close down that lens even further to f22, and now it's like a straw, just a fraction of that water is able to pass through. The other benefit of apertures is that they make more or less of the image in focus, and this is what's called depth of field. And again, this can be a complicated process, but right now, all you need to know is that a wider aperture, so that's a smaller number, creates a shallow depth of field. And a narrow aperture, that's a larger f-stop, creates a wider depth of field. Controlling how that light hits the sensor is the job of the shutter. Now it opens and closes to expose the sensor. The longer the shutter is open, the more light is hitting it. And that time that it's open is usually measured in fractions of a second. For the moment, the main thing that you need to know about shutter speeds is that the shorter the exposure time, the more that you are gonna freeze motion. And the longer that that shutter is open, the more blurry and abstract the image becomes. That's because you're moving the camera slightly during the exposure. Now we get to the real magic of the whole thing, the sensor or the film. This is this clever little thing that's going to record all that light that you see and create a photograph. Now, in a very basic way, it's sensitive to light and you can decide how sensitive it is. And this, this number is expressed as an ISO number, the smaller the number, the less sensitive, the higher, the more sensitive. Now, higher isn't always best. The more sensitive that you make the sensor, the more you're going to introduce things that, a thing that's called noise. And in film, this was called grain. 
For now, just know if you want to have those smooth tones that so many people talk about, you want to choose a low ISO. Those are the, the three basic building blocks. It's really that simple. And it's called the triangle of exposure because all three are linked and they, and they work in conjunction with each other. You can see the triangle of exposure in, in action on your camera with your camera modes. Set your camera on P and, and auto ISO if you have it. And the camera is gonna adjust all three corners, the aperture, the shutter speed and the ISO to give you what it thinks is the correct exposure. Now set your camera onto T, V or S, that's shutter mode, and you're manually going to set the shutter speed. So the camera's going to adjust the other two settings to give you the exact same exposure. And the same goes for AV or aperture value. Now you're in charge of the aperture and the camera will change the shutter speed and the ISO once again to give you those same three exposures. You see how easy it is. All the things work together. So you're learning something already. You're improving your photography skills is, is, is that simple. I don't want you to feel any pressure at this stage to only shoot in manual or in raw. Those are choices that you can make later on once you've learned the basics. Right now, shooting JPEG or using a program mode on your camera is not going to help you back. And in fact, on the contrary, it's going to free you up to explore the possibilities. Now, speaking of cameras, at the end of this video, I'm going to share with you the best piece of kit that a beginner photographer should be using. Think of exposure like the framework of your house. It's important to know how to put up the framework, but you don't need to overcomplicate it. When you drive past a selection of housing being built and you see all those frameworks, all the houses look very similar, don't they? Yeah. So how do you make your house look unique? The second part of how to learn photography is, is the aesthetic part. You know, we've already put up the walls and the framework using exposure. Now it's time to paint those walls, to put in the windows and the doors, to make your house look different to the one that was built next door using the exact same framework. Photography is literally the art of drawing with light and at the heart of everything in photography is light. Now light's a funny old thing, we can see it all the time, it's all around us and yet for a beginner it, it's very hard to actually see. Now I'm sure you've stood at some point next to someone as they took a photograph and, and you've looked at that result and you thought how, how did they see this? I don't see it, you know. This is what happens when you train your eye to see the world like a camera and to look at the world like a photographer. It's a whole new way of looking at things. And once you open that window, you're going to see that the opportunities for photography are everywhere. We're all used to seeing the world in, in a certain way. And as a photographer, you want to start seeing it differently. So, so how do you do that? If you have a small child or grandchildren, look at how fascinated they are with everything. The tiniest, most boring thing, certainly to us, can be utterly captivating for them. It's this ability to look at the world in a fresh, new way that we want to tap into. To start harnessing this ability to see differently, I want you to try this simple exercise. The next time you have your camera with, I want you to go out and find letters in nature. Photograph as many as you can. This was the first practical assignment we had at photography school. And at the time, it seemed a bit odd but looking back now, it was probably the single biggest jump in my photographic ability. Now, this simple exercise, which you can do even with a camera phone, is the key. It is the key to seeing the world in a fresh new way, to finding those opportunities for photographs that other people don't. You can also use what you learned with your technical exposures by using shallow depth of field to, to isolate those, those letters. If you ever get frustrated with your photography, I want you to look at the, the comments here on the videos on this channel. You're gonna see that you're not alone. Photography is a creative art form and all of us get frustrated from time to time. The, the crucial thing is that this is a place to find support, to feel encouraged by this amazing community. Now, just like a photo school, we're here to learn. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner photographer or a veteran, all of us are able to contribute something and all of us are learning something new. At the end of this video, I'm going to link to another short video which I've created just for you. Now, it's not a public video, so you're not going to find it on my channel. You won't find it in search. The only way you're going to get to it is to link at the end. I'm going to share with you some advice that I think would be of immense benefit to all beginning photographers. Now, be sure to check it out. It's just five minutes and it could save you years of frustration. Making your house of photography look different to all the others is, is one thing, but how do you make it an architectural masterpiece that ends up in, in all those design magazines? The third area where you will improve your photography skills is visual communication. Now this is just a fancy way of saying having your photos you know, create a feeling in a viewer. 
You may not know this, but you are already practicing this photography skill at, 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 the, at a basic level on, on almost a daily basis. Every time you send someone an image or some sort of funny picture without any word of explanation or comment, that is a form of visual communication. Good photographs are a combination of technical and aesthetic skills, but great photographs also communicate something. The following two images are by the same photographer, and I want you to think about what feelings they convey in you. This feeling could be quite obvious, it could be right up there in your face, or it can be very subtle, something you only sense somewhere in the back of your mind. This way to learn this skill is to, is to feed your passion with raw materials. Look as many photographers as you can. A great way to do this is, is to look on this channel. I, I introduce you to some photographers whom you may not have heard of. Or if you have a favorite photographer and they have a Wikipedia entry, go there, read it, see who influenced them. Look up those photographers, jump down that rabbit hole. One of the drawbacks of the modern world is that we tend to see images as single images. We, they exist without context. They, are, they live all by themselves. Now, I would encourage you to either visit a library or a bookstore or a gallery or an exhibition, somewhere where you can see photographs and see how the images are created to work together. Look for things like juxtaposition. That's when two elements or, or two separate images work side by side to give you a third new way of looking at the image. Now, just like great writers read and, and great painters visit galleries, you must also look at photography. Let it work its magic on you. See it as the viewer sees the work. The more that you look at photographs and the more that you try to figure out why that photograph makes you feel a certain way, the more you are learning this language of, of speaking visually. Now, when you learn any new language, you learn the basic words first, you know, ball, cat, rug. With learning to speak visually, I want to look for the basic emotions. Does a photograph make you happy? Does it make you sad? Does it make you fearful? Does it make you intimidated? Because you've been absolutely awesome, you clicked on that thumbnail and you've spent time with me now discovering how to learn photography, I, I want to share a bonus tip with you to help you start your journey as a, as a beginner photographer. And this is explore all genres of photography. If you're probably interested in one or two, that's, that's perfectly fine, but you never know. It's possible you may find a passion in a genre that you, you never expected. When I was a student, I, would, I was convinced I was gonna be a landscape photographer. I hated people, I didn't want to be near people, I certainly didn't want to photograph them. And as it turns out, because we did a lot of portraiture at photo school, I found I was quite a good portrait photographer, so much so that I won a national portrait competition a, a number of years here in the UK. And most of my, my photographic career has been of taking people. So, so keep an open mind, seek out photography, give everything a try, see what happens. And that advice I gave you earlier about the best bit of kit for a beginner photographer, well, it's not your camera. You don't need, you absolutely don't need a fancy camera to get started. The best camera for a beginner photographer is the one that you have right now. No, the best bit of photography kit that you could possibly need are your eyes and a willingness to use them. I want you to click here for the article of the advice that I've, I've mentioned. It's something that I really wish somebody had told me years ago and it would save me so much heartache. Thank you ever so much for joining me here today. I wish you all the best as you improve your photography skills.